uh, first off, Harry, congratulations on this. You were really, really awesome. And to me, watching it, it just felt so natural for you because you get to play a dad in this movie. That was awesome. I mean, when you read a script, when I read a script, you know, you go through the character and you're turning the pages, not only in anticipation of what's going to happen in the story, but what happens specifically to your character. You know, when, when you find out, when I found out that, that, that I was a, a dad in this, oh, man, that's great. When I find out that she's a little girl, oh, man, that's even better because I have three little girls, you know. So it was just really cool. I felt really comfortable playing that guy. And you probably had, oh, no, fun with these kids at all. Not at all. They're little brats. They were obnoxious and showing up late. They didn't know their lines. Man, I fell in love with these kids. I just fell in love with them. My whole family did. I mean, we're, we're friends of theirs now. You know, we text each other and, you know, communicate a lot. They're, they're amazing kids. And I hear you were the Joker on the set. You kept things a little light, I, I'm sure. You know, it was, it was that kind of set. It was really laid back. I mean, we're shooting in Clearwater, Florida. I mean, the weather's beautiful. We're working with a dolphin, you know, hanging out with Morgan Freeman, Chris Christopherson, Ashley Judd. I mean, you know, it was, it, was, it was awesome. It was really laid back. Yeah, I can imagine. Okay, now I have to ask you, because this is something, I'm watching this movie and I see Harry Connick Jr. touching the dolphin, being with the dolphin. But here you are, an amazing, you know, musician and piano player. Okay, was your career, music career, ever in jeopardy that it was going to nip your fingers? <laughs> I, I did think about it. I mean, dolphins have a lot of teeth, sharp teeth. Um, but what really freaked me out was going in there with the river otters, because as this marine aquarium re rehabilitates many different types of marine life, um, I got a chance to go in and, and feed these little river otters, you know, and man, they can be real nasty because you're feeding them baby carrots. And to them, you know, there's not much different between your thumb and a baby carrot. So I got a little nervous in there. But it all worked out okay. I, oh yeah, they were cool. They were they were they were pretty nice about it. That's awesome. And I also understand too that on your iPad or on your iPhone, you had um, episodes of the Electric Company to show the kids. Yeah, oh yeah, I I, um, I looked them up on YouTube because that that show meant so much to me. And when I hear about older people talking about shows or songs that, that meant a lot to them, it's it's difficult to relate because you have no point of reference. It doesn't mean anything to to these children to hear me talk about. Easy Reader on Electric Company. So the great thing is you just look it up on YouTube and show them. I don't know how happy Morgan was about that, you know, singing, I, I'd like to take a bath in a casket in a Dracula costume. But it was so cool. And they were like, whoa, that's so neat, you know. He was okay with it. I asked him. <laughs> he, it was just such an important event in my life. I mean, the guy taught me how to read, you know what I mean? I mean, this cool guy, Easy Reader, I mean, you know, you can have all that. All the, the people at school, man, I, I just watch Morgan Freeman and learn how to read. Absolutely. Um, now, you know, you work on a movie like this, and it just works on so many levels, Harry. It's so inspiring. It, it just really, I, I didn't know I was going to need a box of Kleenex in this movie. Really <laughs> I, know, I did too. It's so awesome. But, you know, I can't imagine that you don't walk off the set at the end of the day and it doesn't change you as a person. You're, you're absolutely right. I mean, there wasn't a day that we left, aside from maybe some, some technical days where we were working offset um, on location, but it, it was just uh, a mind-blowing experience. And as much as winter was an inspiration to us, the people that work with her were as or more inspirational. I mean, these people, I mean, they give their entire life to these animals. And they're, they're, they're a certain ilk of human that, that, that I haven't really met or spent a lot of time around. They're, they're fascinating dedicated, wonderful people. Yeah, and how um, winter inspires, uh, you know, people everywhere, but especially people who have prosthetics. That's oh, yeah. I mean, amputees will come in there, and, and you'll see them watching winter, and you see them communicating with her, and you just, oh, my gosh, it takes your breath away. I mean, able-bodied people, it takes your breath away. But when you see a, a child, you know, who's lost a leg or a, an adult who's lost an arm, whatever it is, I mean, there's a, an immediate bond that you see, and it's, it's a privilege to be a part of it. Yeah, so was the Winter a Diva co-star? <laughs> you know, she was amazing. I think I was the biggest diva on set, you know? I would be like, well, I'm not gonna show up until she shows up, because I'd be watching in the pool. I'd have my assistant say, okay, she's in the pool. Okay, I'm coming now, because it was all about me. It always is always, it always about you. <laughs> always is about me. Seriously, you got to dial it back a little bit. I know. Yeah. Kosi was telling me she was so inspired by you too because she had her, she's a piano player. Oh yeah, very good one. She had a little a keyboard there uh -huh. and she was just 
freak that you were playing in front of her. That's so cool. Is oh, it we had the best time. I mean, their classrooms, Nathan and Cozy's classroom was one of the offices at the Marine Aquarium. So, I mean, you'd shoot here and then 20 feet over here was their classroom. And they had, I mean, I, I spent most of my time in there with them. I never went back to my trailer. I was always going in their classroom, just screwing around, giving them some music lessons. I would ask our teachers, can we do music today? And that, that would count sometimes. So it was neat. That's awesome. Um, how do you, you know, distinguish between, between your music and your acting career? And how do you make time for both? And, and be a dad and have your family. And well, that's, that's the first thing. I mean, being a dad, being a husband, I mean, those, everything kind of revolves around that. And it's just a matter of doing things that look interesting and having a great manager who can help me put those things into a schedule. So it's not too frenetic, you know. There's a lot going on, but I just take it a day at a time and do things I really want to do. So we're going to see you back on Broadway? Is this yeah. true? Can we you start tell us Yeah. It, it, the show's called uh, On a Clear Day You Can See Forever, and it, it was a great show in the late 60s, and Barbara Streisand starred in the movie with Eve Montan, and I play a psychiatrist, and um, it's all about the, the, the hypnosis and reincarnation, and it's just a great story with amazing music, and uh, I'm just really excited to get started. Well, you rocked in the pajama game. That must have been a lot of fun. It was so fun. It was really hard. I mean, I never knew how hard Broadway performers work in, until I did that show. I mean, they're, they're, they're the most talented people in the show business, those, those folks on Broadway. They're unbelievable. Yeah, it's amazing. Eight shows a week. That's, I know. Yeah, it's not, uh, well, I know you can handle it for sure. Uh, I'm doing a little feature on vacation destinations or just places you like to go. Um, is there somewhere that you love to go just to get away with, whether it's with the family or just New Orleans, own? number one. It's my favorite place. I go there all the time. My kids love it. If we had to pick any place in the world to go, it would be New Orleans. We love the food. We have tons of family there. Uh, that's, that's my number one. There's a ton of other places I love to go. I like to go to Harbor Island in the Bahamas. I like to go to, uh, you know, Paris is an incredible place, you know, but New Orleans is number one. Yeah, well, those beignets, I mean, really. Can't can, beat can it, man. It. And lastly, what is the best thing about going to a movie theater and seeing a movie on a big screen? Not your iPod, not your iPad, but why do you like being in a theater? It's just it's just a different it's hard for me to articulate what the feeling is it's like going to a, a ball game in person r rather than watching it on tv there's just something there's a communal spirit there like you feel like you're watching it even if there's only a few people there there's something about it's more of an event i think and it's a lot easier to remember movies that you've seen in the theater i think than sometimes you've seen it on your ipad it, it just i like it i like the event the popcorn and the drinks and the I like the whole thing. Good stuff. Well, we like you, and you were so, so good in this. Keep it up, and uh, I can't wait to come and see you on Broadway. Thank okay. you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank nice you. Nice to Great see you. Great seeing you again. Thank you.